So let me share a story with you. I posted on my social media that I needed someone to help me edit videos. I got quite a few people message me. One individual told me that he knows someone that was in need of a job, a refugee from Saudi Arabia. I told him, great, get him to contact me. When this individual contacted me, he told me he doesn't have any Adobe Premiere experience, that he uses a free tool instead. I said, okay, that unfortunately won't work for me because I need that specific skill set. I work exclusively in Premiere. So he said, okay, maybe I can help you with something else. I said, can you write? He said, no, my grammar is bad. <laughs> I said, okay, what will you help me with then? He said, I'll help you get ideas for videos. I said, okay, let's try that. Go ahead, share some ideas with me. He's like, I don't have any, <laughs> but I'll work for you for free. Don't worry about paying me. So here I am stumped. How did he expect to work with me? If you have nothing to bring to the table, there's about a zero chance of getting a job. <laughs> for the times that I wanted to hire someone, I sometimes get people who think that if they offer to work for free, that this is some sort of benefit and they're more likely to get the job, but that rarely ever convinces me. I find that people who do free work tend to treat it as a low priority, so I'd much rather pay someone for the time and get quality work back. This brings me to my advice. Young people, young Muslims, ex-Muslims, atheists, anyone that's listening, you need to invest in yourself. You need to learn skills that'll help you, skills that you can sell for money. I understand that sometimes it feels pointless to learn something that you don't have a need for. It. So make a project for yourself. If it's video editing that you wanna learn, make a video. That's part of becoming valuable. Practice your editing skills. Upload it to YouTube so now you have a portfolio as well. It doesn't have to be video editing either. It could be coding, making websites, making apps, all of these examples I'm giving you are technical, but it doesn't have to be so. Spend time reading books. Spend time learning how to communicate effectively. Practice public speaking, whatever it is. Learn something new. Don't spend all your time watching Netflix and playing video games, unless you can create something out of that. Doing a video game review or posting your best clips or whatever. Make some music on your guitar. What I'm trying to say is don't be a consumer all your life. Don't just consume. Produce, make something, bring value to the world. Be someone that gives, not just takes. If you do this, if you are prepared, you will find opportunities arise. People like me are always looking for people to help them and will be willing to pay money if it makes our lives easier. Young people tend to have so much free time nowadays. You don't have to turn yourself into a machine that never rests. Take a rest, take some time to do things you enjoy, but also sit down and do some things that are painful that'll help you in the future. You see, we tend to discount our future selves. We tend to think of our future selves as someone else, someone that we don't need to care about. So we overeat, we drink too much, we watch too much, we do too many things that are not going to help us in the future. Because we tend to think future 60-year-old Samir is another guy, it's not me. And I don't need to worry about him. That's not the case. Eventually, you will be that 60-year-old person. But you know what? When I look back at some life choices I made, I actually wanna thank my former self. I wanna say thank you for working hard in high school and university because those skills that I learned, those skills you learned rather to my former self, those writing skills, those communication skills, those presentation skills, those coding skills, whatever it is, they stayed with me until now, until the age of 37. So make decisions that your future self will be proud of, not just in terms of learning, but in terms of exercise, get a good workout routine going, eat healthy, meditate, even save money, put aside five to 10% of your salary into savings or investments. These small changes that you put towards your future self will pay off with high dividends. I'm going to share a secret with you, the secret to motivating yourself to do these things that feel painful. The secret is that you need to connect emotionally with what you're doing. Think about what benefits you'll get out of this and really feel them, and it'll make it so much easier. If you connect to what you're doing emotionally, it becomes exponentially easier for you to accomplish and to keep it up despite the difficulties. Visualize yourself being strong, being an expert, making lots of money, whatever it is. This is also the best way to get out of a country. If you're an ex-Muslim who wants to migrate to the West, this needs to be your plan. This is the most reliable, easiest way for you to come to another country as a skilled worker. Having valuable skills also makes you a better parent and a better partner. This is the way. 
This is how you make the most out of your life. You spend the least amount of time working for money and you spend the rest of your time enjoying it, doing things that you love. And if you really love what you do, it no longer feels like work. Think of it like an experiment. Try different things. See how it goes. Some ideas will sink and some will swim. Keep the ones that swim and ditch the sinking ones. Repeat this process until you find something that works well for you. The other advice I have is to specialize. People who specialize are very valuable in today's world. If you are incredibly good at something, you become really valuable to others in solving the problems and getting the work done. I rarely ever see someone that has focused and honed their skills that does badly in life. There are also special skills that are uncommon and in huge demand. Look for those. David Blaine said as a child, he used to spend hours practicing card tricks. Day after day, he would do this until he mastered them. Years later, he is one of the most famous and most successful magicians in the world, all because he worked at it. You merely need to pick something, anything, and get good at it. Take 10,000 hours and become a master. I do believe that you have to really love it though to master it. If you don't truly love what you're doing, you can never get to the level of mastery. But don't give up. Often when you start something new, it's awkward and painful. But as you get better, you'll gain more satisfaction and enjoyment from it. Thanks for watching. Let's all be the best versions of ourselves. Take some steps now for your future self. He or she will thank you. And thank you to my patrons for your support. Thank you to everyone who has donated. Thank you to everyone who continues to share my videos. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir, signing out.